Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Friday. It is the eighth day of March, year of our Lord, 2024. A uh, very wet day out there today, but it's a good rain. You know, it's not a torrential downpour. We certainly need the moisture. You know, we're coming into this year with the deficit from last year, and I believe the ground is mostly thawed. And how do I know that? Well, I'm seeing earthworms, and all of a sudden my grass is greening up. And if it warms up, I'm going to be mowing. Uh, but we'll take the rain. It's not a torrential downpour. It's not snow. Uh, the ground is thawed in most places, so the water is going to start soaking in, and we desperately need it. You remember how low the river was last year, the Rock River and the Mississippi here? And it's low now, which is not atypical for this time of year uh, coming out of winter, but the, the moisture is welcome. The farmers aren't doing a lot. of. I have seen a few out in the fields tilling, uh, but nobody's planting yet, of course. So the moisture is most welcome. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grants us quiet night and peace of the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing and praise your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Tonight we turn to the 49th Psalm, um, one of the Psalms, indicated for us to reflect on, sing, read this day. It is an inscribed psalm. It is to the choir master, a psalm of the sons of Korah. The sons of Korah, temple musicians. And so we don't know a specific person. These are people who was tasked to write these things for the temple worship. Um, so the sons of Korah um, in this psalm, well, I will, I will read it, not sing it. Uh, it's, it's a rather lengthy psalm. It is 20 verses. It's not all that lengthy. You just hear my voice a little gravelly tonight. So uh, um, let me sing it for you now, or read it for you now. Hear this, all peoples. Give ear, all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom. The meditation of my heart shall be understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb. I will solve my riddle to the music of the lyre. Why should I fear in times of trouble, when the iniquity of those who cheat me surrounds me? Those who trust in their wealth and boast of the abundance of their riches. Truly no man can ransom another or give to God the price of his life, for the ransom of their life is costly and can never suffice, that he should live on forever and never see the pit. For he sees that even the wise die, the fool and the stupid alike must perish and leave their wealth to others. Their graves are their homes forever, their dwelling places to all generations, though they called lands by their own names. Man in his pomp will not remain. He is like the beasts that perish. This is the path of those who have foolish confidence, yet after them people approve of their boasts. Like sheep, they are appointed for Sheol. Death shall be their shepherd, and the upright shall rule over them in the morning. Their form shall be consumed in Sheol with no place to dwell. But God will ransom my soul from the power of Sheol, and he will receive me. Be not afraid when a man becomes rich when the glory of his house increases, for when he dies he will carry nothing away. His glory will not go down after him. For though while he lives he counts himself blessed, and though you get praise when you do not when you do well for yourself, his soul will go to the generation of his fathers, who will never again see light. Man in his pomp, yet without understanding, is like the beasts that perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, that last line of the psalm sums it up, doesn't it? Man in his pomp, in our pride, in our fallenness, and looking to ourselves. Man in his pomp, without understanding, is like the beast that perishes. You are, you know, when you read this psalm, you hear echoes of Ecclesiastes. Remember, Ecclesiastes, we don't read much of it at all in the Sunday lectionary. It doesn't really come up in the, in the, much at all in the, in this yearly lectionary. Read it, though. 
Ecclesiastes was one of the great scrolls. It was read in its entirety every year, and it, and it is a backdrop to people's thinking about themselves before God, that death is always near, and that you can't take anything with you. The word Solomon uses over and over again is vanity. I've mentioned this before. We've talked about that word, vanity. Uh, that is more than likely the name that Adam and Eve give Abel, Aval, which is vanity or form of the word vanity. We're not quite certain about that. But think about that. They, they are given the promise. And this is fascinating to read in Genesis. You know, the, they certainly, these people know the promise uh, of the one that would crush Satan's heel, the one that's going to undo the fall. And especially think about how painful that was for Adam and Eve because they knew what life was like. Well, we don't know it. They knew what life was like before the fall. Well, they, knew, they knew the full weight of the curse. You know, death uh, is there. So Cain is born, and there's a number of people when you read Genesis that, oh, he's the one, he's the one, he's the one. Cain is born, and they think he's the one. They use language to that effect. And then, of course, what he's doing, he kills his brother, Abal. Um, and they realize even before that episode that Cain is not the one. You, know, you have a child in your house or a child in your life. You realize, and we love them, and they're sweet, but they're sinners, and they let you down right away. You, know, you don't have to... You don't have to teach kids how to not behave and how to be how to not be good. They come knowing that. You have to teach them to be good, to be good citizens, to be good children, to be children of God. We spend all our effort in that. They already know because they're under the curse. So anyway, uh, we are all under the curse. And you hear those echoes of it's just vanity, because you are going to die. Now that's not where this psalm leads us, neither does Ecclesiastes. But you do have to think, you know, what am I working for? What am I doing? You know, what is this all for? You know, and as you age, you think about that quite a bit. You think, what, what's going to happen to all this stuff? Yeah, maybe it'll go to my ears. What if my ears are fools? Well, mine aren't, but, you know, what What if they are? Or what if you don't have any? Who does, whose does it become? And I run into that all the time. I run into people who have no ears. And what will happen to the things that they cherished and worked hard for? Uh, does somebody, you know, you think about your prized possessions. And somebody just comes in with the dumpster. And chucks it. You know, they look at it and think, I don't want this. And into the dumpster it goes. Into the landfill it goes. Ne just like you. you know, never to see the light of day again. Fascinating psalm, this psalm. You know, hear this. All peoples give ear, all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom. You know, what is wisdom? Well, we think wisdom comes with age. We think wisdom comes with education. I got to tell you, you know, you, you, I think if you're, if you've lived a few decades on this earth, and I think it takes a few decades to sort of really get a hold of this. Uh, I mean, people can be cynical at a young age, but I think they still fall in this trap. I mean, who do people think are wise, especially younger people? Unfortunately, older people who ought to know better. All of us ought to know better. People, we, we equate success with wisdom. So Hollywood figures... Uh, musicians, you know, rock stars, uh, popular musicians, like they know, you know, like they really know. But we think, oh, they have reached this massive level of success. Now, they might be very talented in what they do. Fine. But it doesn't mean they're wise. But you know, so many of them want to grab the microphone, too, and speak like they are wise, and we're too, too eager to listen. So it uh, happens in politics, too, doesn't it? You may hear me last night. I don't need to rehash that, but you know where I stand in these things. So, what is wisdom? You know, wisdom, where does it come from? It comes from having a hearing heart, a heart that submits to the Word of God. That's where wisdom is found. Wisdom is hearing God and submitting your life to that and upholding what God says, not only in your life, but you know, by, your, by His grace in the world around you. That's wisdom. You know, that's where we can say, well, this is, you know, I'm looking at my very nice house around this beautiful home, very blessed. And many of you have listened to this and been here. You know, I, my door is always open. and can come anytime they want. And uh, anyway, you know, you know, it's all going to go away. It's all going to be somebody else's. The government could get ticked off me, change the laws, and take it from it tomorrow. What does it matter? You know, it's nice. Will I be happy about that? No. But I also know what I am because what Scripture tells me, what I am in Christ. And Christ is certainly in this psalm. And so I know the end of the story. So I'm hopeful, I'm joyful. So I will incline, incline my ear to a proverb. I will solve my riddle to the music of the lyre. Uh, so the Psalms. 
Why should I fear in times of trouble? Remember, Christ says, stop being afraid. Why do we need to be afraid? When the iniquity of those who cheat me surround me, we're going to be persecuted. We're going to have to be, we're going to have people bear false witness as our Lord did. Uh, but it doesn't matter. We know, one, we are going to suffer in this world. We're going to take up his cross and follow him. And we know the story. We know what awaits us. You know, this is nothing, this life. Uh, we hear about those who trust in their wealth. We hear that no one can ransom their life for another. You, you can't buy people out of the grave. Only Christ can do that. You know, and he did that with his own, not with gold and silver, as we learned in our catechism, but with his precious suffering and death by his blood. His blood. That's where life is in the blood, right? We are ransomed by his blood. Uh, he sees even the wise die. The fool and the stupid alike must perish and leave their wealth. Died. We all die. It doesn't matter. You know, that's the great uh, the great end that awaits us all, apart from our Lord returning, is that it doesn't matter what gifts you have on this earth, what, 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 what you think you're capable of, what you're doing. It's going to come to an end. And then you have absolutely no control of what happens after that. None, because you're dead. But what happens to your wealth? You can train your kids and you can you know, be somebody who's a very big political or, or uh, a community leader and you know some kids rise to the occasion and try to carry on the family legacy legacy but we know how unsuccessful that often is the kids end up going off the rails they end up wasting the gifts their parents gave them just like we waste the wish that the gifts that god has given us and they lose it all just like us in the fall so Man in his pomp will not remain. He is like beasts that perish. Pride. That's the sin. Like sheep, they are appointed for shale. Death shall be their shepherd. You know, there's a, a very sort of depressing psalm at this point, but he's just communicating the reality, which we know. We are going to die. We as Christians know that. We're, we're fine with that. You know, we know what the consequences for our sin will be. We're fine with that. Why? Because we know that death has been undone in Christ our Lord, that death will not hold us for us, it's merely sleep. Be not afraid when the man becomes rich, when the glory of his house increases, because he'll carry nothing away. Um, and, and then, uh, as the psalm ends, we come back to that verse, man with a, a man in his pomp, without understanding. You have understanding. You've been given the gift of the Spirit. You've been Hearing the voice of God you know, through the life, your life in the church is why your church attendance is so important. You're in that place where God promises to be, to open your ears, to climb into your ears, to open your ears, to hear the one that he has put in front of you, to proclaim his word. That would be the pastor, me, in the case of the saints of Emmanuel. Yeah. So you are, you have understanding. You, know, you, you, you read the, the, the parables and hear what Christ says, and you think, yeah, I see what he's saying. I understand because you have that gift. And so we are not like the beasts that perish. We are heirs of everlasting life. This is a very fascinating psalm. I think Ecclesiastes, I wish we it would come up more in our, on our Sunday lecture. Of course, Christ is at the center. But what a fascinating work. I should teach them again. I taught it a number of years ago. Uh, maybe one of these days I'll, I'll, I'll teach it again. It is a fascinating work. All right. Before we turn to the litany, let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed and then say the night diminished. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us, help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweats, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help us, good Lord, in all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, to accompany your word with your grace and spirit, we implore you to hear us, good Lord, to raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness and their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Print your hands, I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing a little bit of 563, Jesus, thy blood and righteousness. Jesus, thy blood and righteousness, my beauty are my glorious dress. Midst flaming worlds in these array, with joy shall I lift up my head. That's a stanza one of six of 563. Jesus, thy blood and righteousness. Remember the five ways you can, five things you can do to improve your marriage. Session four meets tomorrow at 10 and 8.30 to 9.30 tomorrow morning. Uh, just a quiet time of prayer. You can watch that online right here. Or you can come. The church will be unlocked. Come and, and sit there for that hour or for as long as you can and uh, be part of that. With that, I pray a blessed evening for all of you. And by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.